All right, everybody, so it's a little bit after nine o'clock. Frankly, I'm exhausted. I don't feel like doing anything. And I think maybe I'm gonna change my mind and have some coffee after all after this. But I was like, okay, well, it's oil change time. Okay. Now, there, the ground was just covered in dew this morning. If I had had to get my jack stance and my jack out and try to get this car jacked up on this uneven ground, I was just gonna put it off forever, which is basically what I've been doing, which is why I bought those ramps. Okay, so I just had to drive this sucker up on those ramps. Boom. And this is all the tools I needed. Okay. And I got it. It's mostly drained out from under there. That's how full my pan is. I'm gonna let it keep dripping. It's my old filter. So look, if you've never changed your oil, if you've never changed the oil on your car, don't just like go at it and not know what the heck you're doing because even though sometimes you see me doing things to my house and I'm just going for it and I don't know what the heck I'm doing, you really don't want to break your car. I actually do have an automotive technologies background. Okay, I'm somebody that has actually disassembled and reassembled a manual transmission before, so an oil change is pretty minor. So if you've never done this, just make sure you know what you're doing um, because you know you don't want to over tighten or under tighten anything. And then like little things, like for example, um, most of you, if your car's not if your car has been maintained, you shouldn't have an issue. But like something as simple as this, look, if, if your old gasket didn't come off and you accidentally leave the old gasket up underneath on the seat where it attaches, okay, and you put another oil filter on it, you're just going to lose your oil everywhere. It's not going to be a good time. And yet you might not notice until you actually are like on the highway or something, okay? And then all your oil is just going to shoot out from under you. So some people don't know. It's just like stupid little things like... When you, before you put the new filter on, you just take a little bit of oil and put it around this gasket here before you actually put it on your car, okay? Now, if you go to a shop, they're just gonna take some of the danky old oil out of what came out of your car and put it on here. That's the reality of how that works. But, you know, the last oil change on this was in a shop. Sometimes they over torque things a little bit because again, they don't want to lose anything, so even though technically, like if you were a man, you would probably only need one wrench, you know, for this. But since I'm a woman and I bought a wrench instead of a ratchet, cause I'm somebody, I use a lot of cheater bars and stuff. So like when you're putting this on to the bolt, okay. And you need some more leverage, you actually can, you, you attach the wrenches together like this to create a little cheater bar. And that's why I have two wrenches with me, okay. Just helps make it go a little bit easier without necessarily having to, sometimes I have to like grab things and brace myself in strange ways in order to break it loose otherwise. You know, just little things. So if you're somebody you've never worked on your car, you should really learn how to do some basic maintenance. I almost feel, guys, like I'm showing you this video under my hood and I feel ashamed because when I went to go buy this car, I thought it was a four cylinder. And it is not. It's a six-cylinder. And I really... There's so many reasons why I shouldn't have bought this car. Like, I had to put a, an oil gasket and an alternator on it right away. But again, part of the reason is I thought it only had 118,000 miles on it. Not the almost 200,000 that the guy shystered me with. Okay, I don't know if he replaced the digital odometer with one out of the junkyard with lower miles or what. Like, he probably had to replace a whole computer. I don't know how they do that. But on these Honda Accords, okay, on the four cylinders, and there are some Toyotas that are like this too, the four cylinders do not have timing belts. They have timing chains. It is in my opinion that every vehicle with a timing mechanism should have a timing chain and not a timing belt because these have what are called, most of these newer modern cars have what are called interference engines in them. Okay, so what that means is that the area where the pistons occupy in the engine and the valves occupy in the engine overlap at alternating times. So if your timing jumps, what happens is your pistons start bashing all your valves and you have to get a rebuild. Okay, don't ask me how I know this. I used to, I used to have a first generation Diamond Star Motor Eagle Talon, a little turbocharged number. Okay, and it wasn't even my timing belt that broke, it was the balance shaft belt broke and slapped my timing belt 
and and wrecked my my head. So sometimes shish kebabs happen. Okay. But anyways, you know, considering this thing actually has almost 200,000 miles on it, it's doing pretty good. But I'm very familiar with Hondas, and after I'd been having this for a while, and the issues and the way it was driving, I was like, this is not right that this car only has 118,000 miles on it, because there is no way that a Honda should be having this many issues at 118,000 miles. You know, and it was a younger guy, so maybe he abused it too, but almost 200,000 miles. Here's the Josephine hanging out. She like swallowed a rodent or something. She forgot to chew her food and has been like wheezing and all sorts of, I'm actually a little bit concerned for her. If it doesn't resolve itself in the next couple days, I'm going to have to take my Josephine to the vet or maybe I'll start with some hairball medication. I don't know what I'm going to do, but sometimes she doesn't chew her food and she just like swallows these rodents and it causes problems. Okay. Oh, but anyways, check this out guys. They might, they might feel a little insulted that my, my gift that they gave me is so dirty, but all it means is that it's been working much harder than just simply laying on under the sun, okay? It's been a hard working beach towel that they gave me. It's been, wow, it's been probably over a decade ago. Anyways, I still love First Republic. But I gotta put it back together. And it's gonna be good to go. I'm a little bit ashamed to admit that I'm actually like, because it's not synthetic oil, I'm I'm actually like, I mean, if we're being straight, I'm like a thousand miles over this oil change. But a lot of that was just highway driving on my uh, road trip, but still, it's like smelling, it's some of the oil is burning off a little bit, some of these VTEC engines do burn some oil, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm being slow to end my video now because I'm just freaking exhausted. But, you know, it says put some 520 in it. I used to always run synthetic high mileage stuff in my other um, vehicle, but this is what I'm putting in here. Okay. That's how it's going to be. And I'm putting in, I don't know, like, I doubt I'm going to abuse this situation but look if you're doing your oil changes on time okay even some of these newer cars say you can go 10,000 miles without an oil change you should never go 10,000 miles without an oil change no matter what the bottle or the filter says okay but like something that I might do is let's say I decide to um let's say this car is sitting for a really long time like I'm not putting a lot of miles on it there is at one point where I may just go ahead and drain out this oil Okay, because most of this oil change was on my road trip. And now I'm going to be getting a second vehicle. I don't know when that one's going to be running. But what I might do at some point is just drain the oil real quick, put in a new thing of oil, and just keep this filter on for a little while. But I'm not going to be leaving this on there for no 10,000 miles. That's crazy. Okay, they'll sell you these things. But that doesn't mean that it's good for the longevity of your vehicle. And you know what? It's not like the dealerships care because if you wreck your vehicle being stupid... Okay, then it's like they it's just more business for them. Don't don't trust this stuff. Anyways, y'all, if you don't know how to change a spare, you don't know that you gotta lift it up just a little bit while the wheel's still on the ground, break the lug nuts loose and then lift it up all the way and then take the lug nuts off, things like that. You don't know that you might have to see the other thing is they give you a crappy little jack, but sometimes the wheels get seized on and you gotta give it a little pop. Which if you're on the side of the highway and you don't have a proper jack. Okay, and you're you're just on some dinky little scissor jack and you're all crooked on the side of the highway and you're trying to change a spare and you have to pop that wheel off, your whole car is going to fall off the jack and you're going to be effed. Okay. And then most people, what's going to happen is you've never put air, you've never aired up your spare tire. Most of you have never ever checked the air pressure in your spare tire and the shops don't either. So it doesn't matter when the last time you got your tires changed, got a rotation, got an alignment, got a anything any service they're never going to check the spare tire pressure you have to do that okay so what's going to happen most of you even if you figured out how to theoretically change your spare you're going to get it out of the trunk you're going to put it on your car and then you're going to take the jack down and there and your spare is going to be flat is what's going to happen okay don't ask me how i know this i learned this when i was very young 
I was, I was very young when I learned that the hard way. Okay? And that's a lesson that I'm only going to learn once in my life, hopefully. So make sure you check the spare in your tires, or the air in your spare tire every year or so just to up it because every time there's a big temperature shift okay of I don't know like 10 degrees up and down or something you're gonna lose at least a pound of air pressure in your tires is what's gonna happen it's generally how that goes so you lose air pressure in your tires just naturally okay so I'm gonna wrap this up actually you know what Ugh, I'm so tired it was so nice to have that yogurt and it was so interesting how I just had a little bit in my smoothie the other day and I got up this morning and my body is like, feed me yogurt. So I feel like I, I did a good thing finally getting that going, but um, it is not gonna be an adequate coffee replacement after all. So I'm just gonna let this bish drip. Now they do make some things that you can use to kind of clean out some of the old deposits in there in your engine. You have to be careful when you're dealing with a higher mileage engine. I have an issue in that my transmission fluid, I have got to service it. But what happens if you have, cause I'm used to driving a stick shift. So I had gotten this car in part thinking that I was gonna be teaching my daughter how to drive in it rather than teaching her on a stick shift. But she's like, she doesn't really, she takes the bus to work. So she hasn't gotten a license yet even now. and isn't in a hurry so eventually she's gonna have to do it but on an automatic transmission if you do not service it the way you are supposed to service the fluid what happens is all these deposits and stuff build up along all the seals and everything and the seals they get old they start aging they get more brittle they have this sh crappy fluid in there all this stuff and when you suddenly change all that fluid out okay it can st all this, a bunch of stuff can start leaking if you wait a super long time to service your automatic transmission, okay? So for me, I have to see what the fluid looks like that comes out of here, and I may not, even, I may not change it 100%. I may only change, like, ha I, I may put half of the old fluid back in. I'm going to have to make sure I get a clean, separate drain pan for that, okay? Because it's like... Um, I don't know, they make thickeners and stuff too, because I really shouldn't be leaving any of the old oil in. They make some thickeners and stuff, and I have to see what is actually going to be safe to put in this transmission with 200,000 miles. Because if I do it right, I can probably put off having to get this transmission rebuilt for quite a long time. Okay, but it does have some shifting issues. There was one time where my transmission um, overheated during the road trip, and it is a fluid issue. Um... So he had overfilled the oil in this when I bought it because it had a really bad leak. Um, but it looked like the transmission fluid, okay, I'm not going to check it right now, is also overfilled. And I don't know what the deal is, but it's no good. I did have the guy, the uh, mechanic, check the timing belt for me while I was in California to just make sure if you buy a car, a used car, that's got a decent number of miles on it, okay, you really got to get the chime, timing belt checked. Because again, it's an expensive job. You got to plan on having that. You got to set back the money when you buy a new used vehicle to get that done. But if you don't spend the money on that, it's going to wreck your whole head and you're going to have to get it rebuilt eventually once that timing belt breaks, okay. So this is this is car is my regret, my like biggest vehicle regret ever is getting this freaking six cylinder. They've been charging me more to insure it because it's a six cylinder. And I've been getting lower gas mileage. And it doesn't have a timing chain. So I was super desperate for a car. Again, mine got vandalized to the degree where I had to have a junkyard um, haul it off and they gave me a check for $87 because the car didn't even have a catalytic converter left on it. Okay, my battery got stolen, my windows got smashed, somebody started pulling out the front dash. It was just a mess. I had wrecked it um, in a blizzard transporting Zoxley once, and that was an interesting experience that he'll probably never forgive me for, but you know what? It is, I feel like he would always choose, I almost felt like it was intentional Zoxley. You would always choose in a way until there was like a flipping, like the worst blizzard of the year or something to ask to get transported to some crazy place, Zoxley. And now you're sitting there telling people how, oh, I must be destroyed. Yeah, a few socks. It's not going to happen. 
Get over it.